Hello, this is Dr. Cherise Flanagan. Today I'll be talking about personality testing. This is from chapter 14 of your test measurements textbook. First of all, just to talk about personality as a definition. Personality refers to individual differences in characteristic patterns of thinking, feeling, and behaving. To break that down just a little bit, I want you to note that the patterns are stable. These are patterns that occur repeatedly over time. They're also distinctive from one another, and so we want to recognize that people and their personalities are different from one another. You can see in this picture, this is a picture of my daughter at about age three or four. And from an early age, she showed an openness to experience, to excitement. She was vivacious, fun-loving, and outgoing. This is a picture of my other daughter, and this captures her spirit, which is a quieter personality. She is reserved and introverted. Think for a minute about uh, patterns that might be different across people. For example, three different reactions to a, taking to getting a B on a test. One person might think, this is the end of the world. I have received a B and this is terrible. Another person might think, oh, that's about on par and be pretty laid back about it. While a third might be exuberant, excited that they finally made a B. So you have very different reactions to the same circumstance and we see that day in and day out. You will notice that in your roommates and your families. You having different reactions. That's part of your personality. So what is personality testing? This is the attempt on the psychologist's part to measure personality. And there are hundreds of tests available for this. We will look at some of them today. But the purpose is to understand personality as well as to measure it. Now there are two different types of personality testing. We break it down into these two broad categories of objective and projective. Objective tests are ones that have clear and unambiguous questions. Uh, they measure personality by asking very direct questions such as, I am outgoing, I am shy, you answer yes or no. It's straightforward, has a lot of face validity. Projective tests on the other hand are ambiguous and unclear stimuli and the test taker is asked to interpret or impose meaning on it. So we might see this in something like the Rorschach test uh, where we ask, we show a picture like this one on the right and say, what might this be? And then psychologists interpret that based on some standard data that they have interpreting those. So objective tests, we've talked about several of them this semester already. The MMPI-2, the Milan, the Neo-PF, the BDI and the BAI, the Myers-Briggs, 16PF. These are all objective personality testing. Now please note that I think it's a bit confusing to call um, symptom inventories personality testing. I actually don't like that. Um, but they are in the same category. So if, if you're asked to determine, is it objective or projective? Yes, it's, it's objective. Uh, but several of these, like the NEO and the 16PF and the Myers-Briggs, those are all assessing personality, I would say. Whereas the MMPI has one scale that measures personality. Uh, there is a scale of introversion. Uh, but the Milan and the, the Beck inventories, and really largely the MMPI too, those are measuring more psychopathology. Projective tests uh, are ones that, that we have to read meaning into that. So the Rorschach, um, you see a picture here of a Rorschach type kind of ink blot. The TAT is the thematic apperception test. That's a storytelling test that we'll study. The house tree person, a drawing test, and then a sentence completion test. Projective techniques um, assume a certain hypothesis, which is um, that personal interpretations of ambiguous stimuli must reflect the unconscious needs, motives, and conflicts of the examinee. So it's based on our unconscious um, needs, desires, conflicts, etc. So that's rooted very much in psychodynamic theory. 
the projective paradox is that these measures, the ones I just showed you, they really don't meet the same criteria for um, reliability and validity, yet we continue to, to use them widely. And we'll talk more as the unit goes on about why that is. Um, in fact, five of the top 15 tests year after year after year by psychologists are projective tests. I want to just mention quickly um, several of the um, tests that we're going to measure and also um, the five-factor model, which is the leading model of personality um, today. Uh, the five-factor model um, helps us understand psychopathology on a continuum from normal to abnormal. So you might remember the acronym OCEAN, and we've got the openness, conscientiousness, extroversion, uh, agreeableness, and neuroticism. So we'll be looking at that more closely later, but we do have good evidence that four or five of the major domains of personality can help us um, classify. We were hoping to see more of that in the DSM-5, but that actually didn't quite happen as much as we had hoped. So this is the five-factor model that I was just um, mentioning. You may want to stop the, the slide here and look at these, but I'm not interested in, in um, teasing those out too much right now. The MMPI, uh, we've been talking about this as the granddaddy of all personality tests, 567 items. It takes most people about an hour and a half to complete this test. The MMPI-2, one of the things that's very cool about it is that it includes some validity scales that help us determine uh, the test-taking attitude of the individual. So we can tell if they're trying to present themselves in a more positive light, um, if they're trying to present themselves in a negative light. For example, if someone was motivated to um, show psychopathology for uh, a criminal investigation or because they were going to get some money from that or something like that. This is a list of the MMPI um, clinical scales. There are a number of subscales on the MMPI-2, but these are the top 10 um, that, that we'll study. And I'm just going to quickly kind of land on this at this point. Again, if you want to stop the slides and, and look at this more closely, you can. So that's just a brief introduction to personality testing, and we'll be studying those things a little more closely as the next week or so goes on.